Secret growth potion. I will create my own giant canine crew, and then I'll rule the. Whoa! Wow, this is super. You're better than a TV show. Oh yeah, it's fun, but it's gonna end badly. <laughs> Tom Thomas, get ready for bed. I'm going, Dad. But first, my secret recipe. We start with a bit of. Carboniterus, and now a little bit of bread and butteress, and finally, beard of fumarissa. Chusaka, don't be afraid. Drink, my baby, and you'll grow ten times your size. What? It doesn't taste good. Oh right, I forgot it needed stirring. This hypersonic mixer will do the trick. Tom Thomas, you shouldn't use what doesn't belong to you. That's your father's toothbrush. <laughs> ah! Hey, cut it out! You're acting crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You said it. Uh-oh. You, Tom Thomas, are a big boy, but your brain is smaller than Nolix. Why, thank you. Just go put the toothbrush back in its place. I'm like you never touched it. Nah, that's not right at all. Tom Thomas, what's up? I'm almost done, Dad. Simka, Nolik, please, I really need your help. No panicking. First, we need to understand what could have broken inside of there. An electric toothbrush is really simple, as long as you know these three parts. The battery, the motor, and a very clever mechanism that connects the motor with the bristles. The whole secret to the toothbrush is right in there. That mechanism uses the spinning of the motor to make the bristles move very fast back and forth, from left to right, from right to left. And that's how it brushes your teeth. So what can we do about it? Here's what we do. First we take out the motor, then we take the gears out, and then the mechanism. How much time do we need to do that? One or two hours. What? No! Just listen here, Tom Thomas. You need to open up the battery compartment. Wait for me right here. These are your teeth. Well, I mean, they're not your teeth, but you get what I'm saying. Nowadays, we use a toothbrush to clean our teeth, but it wasn't always that way. The ancient Egyptians used a chewed stick to scrape their teeth, while the ancient Greeks rubbed their teeth with a rag. And the Vikings, well, who knows what they used? And then, only 200 years ago, an Englishman named William Addis came up with something better. He drilled holes into a meat bone, inserted bunches of bristles into them, and there you go, the toothbrush. And here's what I need to tell you all as a fixie, that is, as a master repairman. You need to make sure to brush your teeth often, especially after eating, or you'll be getting them repaired often at the dentist. Well, is something wrong with the mechanism? No, it's fine. Is the motor burned out? No! Then what's wrong with it? You're not gonna believe it. But the battery died. That's all? I know what to do. I'll put in new ones. Shh! Your dad turned the toothbrush on. Looks like everything's fine. It's working. Ooh, way to go. Excellent! find out what kind of slop you mixed up with his brush. What slop? <laughs> How dare you, Nolik? How dare you refer to my mighty potion like this? Tom Thomas somehow soap got all over my toothbrush. 
Can you explain that? Ay, ay, ay. Well, you got caught. What do you say now? Pixies go to Pixie schools and study to be masters. There's so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a Pixie, please don't let the secret out. The antenna. Wow, is this cool or what? Ah, hello there, little fixies. Did you come to see what I'm working on? <laughs> Professor Eugenius, tell us what you're planning on doing with this huge thing. Well, I hope to use this fantastic device to make contact with aliens. Since ancient times, people have wondered, is there life on other planets? What might aliens from outer space look like? And what kind of spaceships do they travel in? There are some people who say that they've seen alien spaceships and that they look like flying saucers. There are even some people who say they've actually made contact with aliens. But personally, I'm sure it's just their fantasy. And science hasn't been able to prove any of these stories either. The one story that makes me laugh harder than all of the rest comes from a guy who claims that he saw aliens with his own eyes. Can you believe it? He said that there was a group of tiny aliens that looked like humans with glowing hair. It seems to me that this guy just happened to spot a few fixies who weren't able to hide from him in time. <laughs> It's ready. If I could talk and now what? The if the aliens are out there flying by the Earth, they'll see this plate get hungry and come for food? <laughs> aliens don't need a plate like this, silly, when they've got plates that fly, flying saucers. You're both silly. This thing isn't a plate at all. It's an antenna. Antenna? Antennas help people receive radio signals. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, like this, this, or this, to pick up a signal that's very weak. Powerful antennas that are shaped like large dishes work the best of all. When radio waves hit the dish, the waves all bounce off of it and gather together into one point. This makes the signal stronger and clearer. The most powerful dish antennas can even pick up signals from outer space. No, look, stop! You'll burn yourself! Don't treat me like a baby boy, okay? Huh, interesting. I wonder what's inside of there, do you know? Why don't we go and take a look? <laughs> I was only trying to help him out. No need, Nola. The soldering iron is way too hot, and I'm practically all done here. Ta -ta. Then let's start looking for those aliens in outer space. <laughs> Just one second, Nolik. Now, uh-huh. Here we go. Nolik, Simka, let's see if we can pick up signals from outer space. Night right now, where the aliens live? What if they're sleeping? Quit bothering the professor with your nonsense. Let us out right now. Can't you hear us? Please let us out! I'm afraid there's no way they can hear us from this far away. Uh, I can't hear any signals. It just sounds like static. Be patient, you guys, and keep listening. Digit, we all know how clever you are. Can't you think of a way out of here? I think I got it, Tula. You stay there. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I'll use a special code I know to send a signal that we're in trouble. Hmm. Wait a second. Do you hear that? Could it be a signal from the alien? Hooray! This is sensational. It means that somewhere in the cosmos are intelligent forms of life. 
Three dots, three dashes, three dots. Ooh, it's Morse code. It's a signal for help that they're sending. You don't think the aliens are in trouble, do you? Yeah, I think so. And who do you think they learned Morse code from out there? Yeah, that's strange. There are hardly any fixies that know that code. Digit does. Ah, oh. and where is he, you know? And where's Tula? Well, well, I think I know exactly with which aliens we made contact. I think I know it too, Professor. Lower the antenna. Greetings to you, oh extraterrestrial visitors. Hi there. <laughs> it's good to be back. Uh, oh. Uh, what a shame. I was really hoping that we'd find intelligent life forms out there. It's all right. <laughs> At least we found two unintelligent ones. <laughs> <laughs> No need to panic. Tula, oh. we're, it's so good you're here. We really need your help. What is going on? Ah, oh, there! Oh, we! Grampus! What? Where? In the mechanical zone, there! And Simka Nolik? There! They're all there! Oh, my children! Don't lose your head. <laughs> 